everyone. We're, head, we're joined by head coach Ed Cooley as well as student athletes Noah Hortler, Ed Croswell, Jared Bynum, and Al Durham. Uh, coach, if you're going to open up with a statement and then we'll take questions for our student athletes before we continue with coach. But coach, when you're ready, please open up the statement. What a St. Patrick's Day, huh? Right? You know, uh, the lucky charm, we're still here. And it really, we talked to the players about our culture, and I thought this was a culture game versus style. And, and I thought our players were resilient today. They did a great job. It also tells you that the strength of the Big East and the styles of play we have to play against. We talked about in our preparation, it's got a little bit of Villanova, has a little bit of Creighton in it. And uh, that's what the Big East basketball is all about, is about getting to this point and being prepared for it. So again, I want to give my conference and our conference a lot of love because they prepared us for what we just went through. So talk to the student athletes. I'm excited for these men. We've earned the right to be here. And uh, again, I'll say this tongue in cheek. It's St. Patrick's Day, and we're really lucky. All right, if you have a question, please raise your hand. We'll bring a microphone around. Uh, please ask your question into the microphone so we can hear you. In the back here. I guess for any of the players, you were the team, everyone was picking for an upset nationally. I'm wondering, since your coach talks about how connected you are, how much that motivated you today? Oh, I mean, you know, we hear the noise that everybody says, but we can't let that rattle us. We knew what we were capable of. We knew we'd be coming in. You know, we're going to have an edge, fire, and a chip on our shoulder. And we just came out and played our game, and we just, you know, proved the whole world wrong and what they were saying. So. Credit to my guys, credit to coach, and we just, you know, gonna hang our hats on what we know. Up front over here. Go ahead. Yeah, Jared, uh, Jared, that last play, you guys were up three, and uh, you, you had the foul where you get hit. Did he come under you? Uh, can you describe that play a little bit? I mean, I was open, and Al had the ball, and I asked him for it back, and I went up to shoot, and as I was shooting, I got hit, and then they called foul, and I got three free throws. Five down the stretch, four down the stretch. Just a, uh, are you the closer now, or is uh, Al still the closer? <laughs> nah, nah, Al still is the closer. I, I learned from him. So, in the back, go ahead. Andre Robinson, Chandler, your Community News. This is questions for the coach. Coach, you really didn't need much. We're going to start with the student athletes first, so we can get them out of here, and then we'll, and we'll, we'll finish up with the coach. What, what did you guys see uh, during the game that you were able to take advantage and uh, keep this team to like 30% free throw? I mean, three-point shooting. Our physicality, our physicality getting to the rim and our physicality on defense. You know, we wanted to be real physical. We wanted to, you know, run them off the three-point line, make sure we were defending, you know, get up in them. And also, we were physical on the offense. We wanted to play at the rim. We wanted to play in transition. We wanted to play, you know, getting downhill. So we executed our game plan and we came out with a win. All right. Oh, go ahead. Prepare. Yep, yep. Ed, uh, the reserves off the bench, you, Al Breed, Jared, can you talk about the impact the whole team had on this game and this win today? Honestly, um, it's been like this all season. Um, we come off the bench, we give each other energy. We're together, we're connected, and I feel like we, we keep this rolling like this. We did this all year, so it's, it's normal. John Fanta, Big East Digital. Al, Coach just said that this was a culture win. You've come into this program this year. How would you define the Providence culture? Oh, man, together. Real close-knit, real tough, real gritty, but also, you know, together as a family. We all came together today, you know, from top to bottom, from coaches to the last person on the bench. I feel like we all had an impact on this game, and I feel like we all had a hand in this win. Up here in front. Noah, for you, just uh, how nice is it to see, uh, you know, contributing to the offensive end? You had struggled a little bit coming into this. Yeah, um, kind of just came in with a clean slate and was ready to – we were preparing all week for this team. We knew everyone thought there was going to be an upset, and that kind of fueled the fire between, behind us, and we came out and showed we were determined to win. And for you and for, uh, for Al, you know, just the way they got off to a great start, did you have a feeling that it was going to have to be more a defensive approach and that allowed guys like Ed and Al to come in and kind of take over the game a little bit? Oh, for sure. You know, we want defense to feel our offense. So, you know, when those guys came off the bench and they gave us a spark, you know, Ed was – on the boards, Ed was getting steals, Bree was sitting down, locking up. So, you know, those guys came in and gave us a tremendous spark. Those guys played their behinds off, and that's a credit to them for always staying ready. And, you know, when their name is called, you know, you're seeing what they can do. Uh, Jared, just 
I wonder what it was like the last few days sitting on that loss in the Big East tournament and you know what you guys were thinking, how much you just wanted to turn the page and, and get to today. Well, yeah, you know, as everybody knows, we took a bad loss in the Big East tournament, but, you know, it's basketball, it happens, but, you know, we knew we had a, another game to prove ourselves and, you know, to get back to work and go out and do what we do on a daily basis. And, you know, we were playing, we were playing in March Madness, we are playing in a tournament, so I wouldn't say we put that loss behind us, but it definitely fueled us to going into this type of environment where it's one and done, and, you know, every time you got to bring your A game whenever you're out on the court offensively and defensively. So. You know, that, kind of, that, that loss kind of filled us, but, you know, we were, we were prepared and ready to get back out on the court. Right, here. No, another single-digit win for you guys. Uh, just a different location, different team, but same result that's been happening all season long? Yeah, I mean, that's kind of our identity now, I guess. Everyone talks about how we win close games. So we're, we're just coming out ready to win. So, that, I mean, we'll, we'll take any win we can get. For Jared, the uh, sequence right before the half, you guys were able to get the ball out of Shireman's hand, force him into a difficult shot right before. Just how key of a defensive sequence was that going into halftime? Uh, it definitely gave us some momentum going into halftime, you know, getting some stops. And, you know, obviously he's their best player, so, you know, we, we call that the known. So you got to know the known. And, you know, at the end of the day, we just wanted to get stops, and that was a way to get stops. And then going into the half, we had a, we had a good lead. And coming out in the second half, we wanted to build on that lead. And, you know, we had a pretty good first four minutes and we got out to another big lead but you know credit to them they're a good team question for Al how do you feel about the runs that you made in this game you guys ended up being up 14 I know this game is about runs making runs what, what was the feeling like how did you feel I mean we don't get too rattled so we all know basketball is a game of runs you know it's gonna be highs and lows but you got to be able to weather the storm weather the punches so we were never too rattled we never got shaken up we just, you know, they went on their run, so it's our turn. Our turn to make a run, our turn to come back, our turn to, you know, get stops and get out in transition and score. So we never look at these runs as, oh, my God, they're making runs. We look at them as, okay, we took a few punches, now let's punch back. All right, any other questions for our student athletes? All right, we'll excuse them. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank, Thank you, you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Good, win, Good job. Proud of you. We'll continue the uh, questions for Coach Cooley, and we'll start with the front, down here in front. Coach, can you talk about the total team effort you got from everyone who played in the rotation today? Yeah, I, I mean, I think this is one of the few games we've had where the entire roster actually scored that played in the game. I thought Croswell and Breed's energy, uh, like, changed the game. You know, I, I thought their physicality, I thought their athleticism, uh, and I thought I thought the physicality and athleticism over the course of 40 minutes was was a big uh, was a big factor in this game. And you know, the team we played is 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 as good as any team we played this year because of the preparation and how much they spread the floor. And I think they have one of the best players in the country that we had to play against. He was a very very hard person to guard. And over here, uh, that's actually my question: How difficult were they to prepare for, and how, how talented do you think Shireman was to? deal with and Manaya on Charmin? Well, first of all, he can play anywhere in America. Uh, you know, um, the, the preparation was, was, was simple yet difficult. And what I mean by that is you, you got to talk about the, the complexities in this simplicity, if that makes sense. Well, that, that was a great line. Um, it, you know, the, it's, uh, they're very simple and they do what they do. So you had to be disruptive with what they were trying to do and you know, simple has worked for them, and that's what our players really concentrated on, you know, trying to stay body to body. Our philosophy is always tough twos, no threes. And again, he took a couple of shots today, one that went in that was late, and all I said was, wow, I mean, you know, nothing you can do about that. In the back. Coach, so speaking of great lines, you had a great line in the beginning when you said the luck today, the, the luck, uh, lucky charm is St. Patrick's Day. Um, at the end of the game, though, there was a little bit of controversy with the Al Durham shot going up. Do you think that the narrative of the luck of Providence is going to continue after that? You know, I'm, I'm always a positive person, uh, and I appreciate your question. I mean, you know, we use that luck. I think in life, we're all lucky. Look where we're at. We're at the greatest stage in college basketball. 
And, you know, that's just been a phrase that we used and I run with it. But in order to advance in these tournaments, there has to be some luck. And I think we're crazy if we don't think that. And our players are kind of driving off of it. And, you know, if luck is the narrative that continues to keep us connected and, and winning, we'll take it. It just so happens it's St. Patrick's Day and I've kind of been joking about it. But it's real. You know, you got to be lucky in order to be successful, no matter if we're in game or in life. Uh, up front here. Ed, uh, you've spoken about past teams, you know, maybe taking some games like if they lose, they go to the gold bracket in AAU, and it's, you know, maybe not life and death like, like maybe it should be. Uh, I wonder where this team compares to the, other, the others that you've had at Providence in terms of how serious they are every night, how dug in they get when they're challenged like they were. This was a major challenge, and I, I said this yesterday, this is the most connected group I've been around in 28 years of coaching, and I think we responded every single time after a loss. We responded with a win, and I thought the response was great. This team it has an it factor, and, and I remembered your question to him. Like, we didn't talk about the, the game against Creighton coming out of coming out of the Big East tournament. You know, it, it happens. We had a bad day, but that's not going to define the season of which these young men have earned. Uh, in the locker room, they're fun to be around. You know, at training table, they're fun to be around. It's an adult group, and the personalities are just, it keeps us young as a staff. It keeps us motivated, and it makes you want to come and just be around them more. So this, this win is, is all about what they've been able to put in over the last three months. Over here. Congrats on the win, Coach. How Thank you. Would you assess how your team handled the pace? Seems like, especially that first stretch in the first half, the game was at a really fast pace. Um, you know, South Dakota State maybe tried to speed y'all up a little bit. How would you mm -hmm. assess how your team handled that? Well, I thought their early pace was, at, you know, in their favor. And, you know, during that timeout, because, again, there was not a lot of stoppage, and I think both teams were gassed around the 11-minute mark. I don't know when the – was it dead? So both teams were tired. And I said, guys, this game is going to slow down. It's going to slow down. And I said, we still want to, you know, we want to score it early if we can. If not, let's make them defend. But I thought the overall grind of the game played to our tempo. It really did play to our tempo. So it was a credit to the players. It's a long game that goes fast, right? And within the game, there's going to be runs. And I thought our players were, were emotionally and mentally focused to get to the finish line. Coach, can you talk about Jared Byam's uh, finish in this game, especially that three-pointer he hit when it seemed like the crowd was coming back into it for the uh, opposing team's fans? Well, that's, what, that's what March Madness is all about. There's going to be runs. There's going to be big shots. There's going to be layups. There's going to be flippers and kickers that go in. You just got to be able to stay locked in, stay dialed in, continue to inspire your men to say, hey, as long as there's time left on the clock and it's a one-two possession game, we pride ourselves as a coaching staff saying, hey, if you give us an opportunity with less than four minutes to play, I like what we do, and I love the players that we're coaching in there. So it's just a matter of conversation and keeping your men inspired and driven to try to get to the finish line. Over here. Ed, down the stretch the last three minutes or so, um, what was your thought process between kind of switching AJ, Nate, and then alternatively Justin and Ed kind of offense, defense there? Well, Justin is elite level defender. You know, his knee was bothering him a little bit, you know, so, and again, we want to keep AJ on the floor on the offensive end. You know, it's, it's like, you know, special teams. You know, you want to put an offensive unit on when you have the ball and it's a dead ball, and you want to put a defensive unit on. And both, you know, Croswell, Manaya, and Breed uh, are some of our better defenders. So, you know, you got to do a good job trying to balance the stoppage and play and get your offense and defensive unit on and off the floor. On top of the win, um, how are you enjoying, I guess, Buffalo as a host city and I guess all the, the atmosphere that comes here with uh, March Madness? I appreciate Buffalo. You know, we had a great meal. Uh, got a great meal as a team at the Chop House. Had an opportunity to sit with our president, Father Sicard, and Bob Driscoll, who's retiring this year. So, you know, what a retirement gift with the season that we've had for them. Um, I've been up here as a head coach when we were at Fairfield and played Canisius in Niagara. Canisius has been very great to us, allowing us opportunity uh, to use their gym. And, you know, as always, I mean, I got some wings in me now. I got, definitely got some wings in me. Those wings were big time. And, uh, you know, I may have the same routine. Chop House, we may be coming back. And for that plug, I want a decent meal. <laughs> Up front here. Ed, we talk about sc uh, scoring the options, second, third. Just how big was Noah today on that, along that level? It was great. You know, Noah Hawkler has gotten better every year he's been here. You know, um, he doesn't say much. He's, he's not a vocal person, but his, his activity on the glass, uh, he's, a, he's a weapon all over the floor. You've got to recognize him in transition in the half court. I think he's an elite level defensive rebounder, and um, he's loved by, by his teammates. You know, And again, it comes back to that chemistry. When you have good chemistry, man, anything's possible. 
believe someone asked one of your players about the, the amount of single digit wins um, that you guys have had this year, another one today. To what would you attribute that to throughout the, the season and how critical that may be at this point of year where you're playing good teams every single game? Well, my entire career, you know, we, we you know, I'm, I'm not the sexiest guy coaching with respect to style. I mean, our style is win. And if it's by one, it's a W. If it's by 30, it's a W. Uh, and, and all we try to do is get to the finish line. And we talk to our guys about embracing, embracing in our preparation, you know, close games. And you have to talk it into existence. And in my 16th year, I think I've been in more close games than not. So, you know, the practice over years has helped us. Um, and I appreciate our players for executing coming out of timeouts. I, I, I'd be remiss if I said I have a Big East mask for you when I go in the locker room. Just letting you know that, all right? <laughs> appreciate you. We have time for a couple more questions. I think there's one in the back. Coach, uh, Ralph Russo from the Associated Press. I'm, I'm probably going to just sort of follow up on what you just asked about the close games because we talk about the luck thing and it sounds kind of fun, but what is it about this team that sort of, it, it seems to come down to making big plays, winning plays late. So what about this team makes them make big winning plays late? I think we've done it all year, you know, and I, I go back to what Coach Skinner said when we were in the locker room. I think we just played a really talented St. Peter's team. We played a talented Vermont team. You know, and I came in, oh, we only won by two, oh, only won by four. He says, come January, February, you're going to get better because of these close games now. And that's what that preparation is all about. So I, I bring our players back to that. We, we want to be in a close game if we can. You know, it beats the alternative, you know. So if we're in a close game, I believe in our players and I believe what we do as a staff. All right, final question in the back. You mentioned the timeout with, at the 11-minute mark in the first half. What clicked after that? You only allowed six points for the rest of the half. You know, the guys said, hey, our feet are underneath us, and, and they really controlled that timeout. Uh, our feet are underneath us. Everybody just look where we're at, March Madness. You know, we got an opportunity to advance. You know, we'll have a second half. Really, that was the player's huddle. And as a leader, sometimes you just got to get out of their way and let them do their due. They've been there. I got a really old group, really old group. That, that I really enjoy coaching because the older they are, the better they are because they listen more than some of the younger cats. All right, well, thank you for your time, Coach, and enjoy the chop house. Oh, my <laughs> man. <laughs> <laughs> All Microphone. There we go. There we go. Sorry. Uh, okay. Well, now we're joined by uh, South Dakota State uh, head coach Eric Henderson, as well as student athletes Douglas Wilson and Baylor Shireman. Uh, coach, I'm going to ask you to start with open up with a statement, and then we'll take questions for the student athletes before we continue with your questioning. So, uh, Coach, if you can please open up with a statement. You bet. Well, obviously, tip of the cap to Coach Cooley and and his team. Um, I thought I thought our guys battled their hearts out. I thought we were defensively 
We were tough. We battled in, in every aspect of the game. We just didn't score enough points. But uh, I can guarantee you this, our, our season will never be de defined by one game. And uh, all the guys in the locker room and, and these guys, we, we, we came in confident. We expected to compete, and we just fell a little short. But I love our guys, and nobody can take away what we accomplished this year. All right, question for the student athletes. Uh, please uh, raise your hand. We'll bring a microphone around here, uh, over here in the middle. He's coming. Baylor, you guys started pretty strong, and you kind of had some showtime going there a little bit with some alley oops and things, <clears> and <throat> it was really fast paced. And then there were two back to back timeouts, and there was a long delay. Did it feel like that slowed some of your momentum? It seemed like you guys had a tough time picking it back up after that long delay. Um, well, for me, I was happy because I was super tired after the long <laughs> eight minutes or that we didn't have a timeout. So, I mean, I guess I didn't really notice it in game that it slowed down. So, so I don't think necessarily it did. I just think it just was part of the flow of the game. What impact did you feel like Providence's defense had on your guys' ability to, to get shots and score points? Well, um, you know, they play really physical and they're really long, you know, at all, pretty much all five positions. And um, they do a great job on defense, you know, trying to take away what they want to take away. And they, and they were pretty good at it. Up front here. Bailey, you guys were coming out of a timeout, 16 and a half seconds left in the first half. You know, it was an eight point deficit. You had a chance to cut into it right before the half. They made you give up the ball. Just how much was that really? A concentration on their part to try to make you <clears throat> give up the ball to your teammates today. Yeah, you know, I'm sure they they were trying to get the ball out of my hands a little bit. You know, I got off to a hard, hot start and I was kind of feeling it a little bit. And so, you know, they really started to shrink the gaps. But I have confidence in my teammates. You know, to pass the ball and they're going to make the right plays and make shots too. Yeah, over here, uh, Doug. You guys got down 14 in the second half and then immediately went on an 8-0 run to cut the lead back down to 6. What do you think allowed you guys to get back in the game right away? Uh, you know, just you know, just playing our basketball, just, you know, it's the game's never over, even when they have big leads like that. It's just stay composed and just chip away at it. Up front here. For Doug, did you think you fouled that shooter? Late in the game, uh, you know, I, you know, no, not at the moment. I thought he kicked his leg there, you know, and I go and ran into him. But you know, I don't make the call, so. You know. Doug, how back? much of an okay. impact is South Dakota State and being at this program made on your life? Uh, you know, it's made a huge impact on my life. Honestly, you know, like I always say, like as a kid growing up, I probably I never imagined myself being in the position I was in, and. I'm really grateful that South Dakota State gave me that opportunity, and they really stuck from, stuck with me from day one. And I just I'm just really appreciative, and they're always going to have a place in my heart, no matter what. Yep, over here, Baylor and Doug. Um, just what are the emotions right now, as far as sort of balancing the disappointment of this loss, but also I would assume uh, the pride of the season that you had this year prior to today. <clears throat> Yeah, you know, I think the disappointment's a little more at the forefront right now. You know, we were really um, excited about this opportunity and we're excited to, you know, make a run. And obviously now that it's over, it's tough. Um, I'm sure, you know, in the next week or so, you know, we'll reflect on the season and, and it'll show that, you know, regardless of what happened here today, you know, our, our season, like Coach said, it wasn't defined just on this game. You know, we had a hell of a season, heck of a season, sorry. Yeah, you know, just to piggyback off what Baylor said, I mean, nobody can take what we did this season from us, you know. We still, I mean, although we lost in the first round, you know, it's a big accomplishment just to even make it to the NCAA tournament. There's a lot of teams in college and everybody can't be here. So just to have the opportunity to be here, it's, it's really, feels really good for me and my teammates and coaches. So, um, you know, for the muscle, yeah, it hurts right now. But like Baylor said, we're going to probably week from now all be together and just reflecting on it just you know talking about the time good times bad times we had during out the whole season here in the back Baylor uh, did this everything live up to your expectations of what this tournament would be and how much do you want another shot at this in the years ahead yeah absolutely you know uh, once the game was over kind of walking off the court you know kind of just turning around and soaking it all in because uh it was a dream come true for me, um, you know, being a kid from small town Nebraska, having this opportunity 
Um, it's special, and I can't thank my coaches and, and my teammates enough for believing in me and giving me the opportunity to, you know, show what I can do on this level. All right, if we don't have any more questions for our student athletes, we'll excuse them. Thank you, gentlemen. We can continue with the questioning with Coach Henderson. Yep. yep, go ahead. Hendo, were they kind of what you were expecting just as far as the size, defense, all those the strengths that you knew coming in? I mean, they were the Big East regular season champs. <laughs> I mean, they, they're so physical. Um, they, like I said in, in the pregame, they take on their personality of their coach. They're together. They play their heart out. Um, and they're very, very physical. So they were. They were. I thought, uh, you, you know, I knew our guys weren't going to be intimidated. Um, but they were physical. They, they were aggressive getting downhill. And I thought we did a good job of protecting the paint. We just, at the end of the day, we didn't score well enough. Go ahead. Coach, game of runs there. Uh, you were able to get it down to three late in the game. Um, couldn't get quite over the hump. Can you talk about the ending sequences of that game there and kind of what was going on? Yeah, you know, we last media timeout, we were as confident as we've ever been. You know, we, we, we can make threes. You know, we, we, can get, we can put some points on the, on the board. And we hadn't gone on a run yet that we normally do. And, and um, so we were, we were confident that we were going to get back in the game. And then obviously we got it down to that single possession game and uh, couldn't get a stop. And then, then, you know, obviously we fouled, I guess, on that three-point shot. And, and um, that, that was a backbreaker. Uh, Hendo, I'll ask the same thing that Matt asked the players. Do you think those back-to-back -back time, media timeouts uh, kind of slowed you guys down? Well, I, it was a devil-headed sword. I mean, it, because, you know, we were cooking. We were playing at the pace we wanted to play at. But our guys were tired. <laughs> I mean, they were, they were, so was the other team. I'm not saying that. So was Providence. So, so we, we needed that rest. We needed to get our breath under, you know, be able to take a breath and, and, and get our legs back under, underneath us. You know, in a big moment, your nerves, and, and to play that long of a stretch to start the game, that, that can take a lot out of you. And, and I did think it took a little bit out of us as far as our flow, our rhythm. We, we did get a little stagnant there. Doug's stomach was a little upset. So, um, you, you know, that was a tough spot for us. And I just felt like our movement was, was slowed down a little bit. I don't know if it was because of the stretch or not, but uh, it, it did seem to change a little bit at that time. I know that. Eric, what did you see on that? Uh, three-point shot that they called the foul on Doug? Yeah, I mean, we can look at that as a big play in the game, and obviously it, it, it was, but um, I, I don't really want to focus on that, to be honest with you. I, I want to focus on, like, the. I, I thought that stretch, you know, with about eight minutes to about two minutes left in the first half, that's where I, I didn't feel like we, we, we had, we gave them second chance points, we gave them a couple easy baskets in transition, and, and then, you know, we got, gave them the flow, and, and and we just didn't score it at those times, so they were able to stretch it out to eight points. And, and that's really where I felt like probably was a big, as, as big an impact as any other part of the game during that stretch. So obviously, um, it was a tough call. Um, it, it is what it is. No, it, just like one game is not going to define our season, one call is not going to determine the outcome of the game. I would have liked it to be different, but. <laughs> In the back. Coach, this program's been very close now, and especially in three of its last four games. Obviously, does it underscore how difficult it is to win in this tournament, and, and what is it going to take to hopefully someday break through and be on the other side of this? I have great confidence, you, you know, that uh, we're going to continue to, you know, put in the time and uh, be a selfless basketball program to put ourselves in position to have opportunities like these. Things have to go your way. You know, obviously, we've, we've, we went on a heck of a run and, and won 21 games in a row with a big-time target on our back in the conference tournament. Um, at the end of the day, every chance we get to play in, in the NCAA tournament, don't ever take it for granted. Don't ever take it for granted because you never know. And so you just want to continue to embrace every moment. And if we continue to work, I have great hope that we'll be back here. And just like today, I had great hope that we were going to be successful. And uh, I think we will be in the future as well. Do you think it worked against you that so many people were identifying you guys as a potential Cinderella and there was so much talk of them being primed for an upset? I don't know if it necessarily worked against us. 
um, but I know it probably worked for Providence, to be, to be honest with you. Uh, our guys have done a good job of, of really not, not really worrying about that. Like I've told you guys, we, we get everybody's best shot in the Summit League every, every night, so that's really not any distraction for us. Um, so I don't think necessarily affected our team, but, but I'm sure it, it helped Providence. Over here. Uh, obviously not the way you want it to end, but just how proud are you uh, of this group, you know, going through everything and, you know, getting to this moment? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's uh, going, going through it, it, you know, you don't really appreciate what you're, what you're doing at the time. Um, but, but like the players here, you know, I'll sit back and reflect on um, what this group did. I mean, it was a historical season. And um, nobody can ever take that away from us. And I, I had so much fun coaching this group. Um, we continued to get better and better throughout the year. Um, and that's th those are the things that really, really make me proud is, is our connectivity, our improvement throughout the year, and just the love that each one of our players have for each other. All right, any other questions for the one here? Go ahead. Eric, Doug was a guy that, you know, your first year coaching, you brought him in, came out on the court and was a great player for you right from the get-go, um, his final game here. What's he meant to you in this program? Well, I mean, I got you. <laughs> you. I don't like it when you get me choked up. I mean, that, that kid right there, like I told our players in the locker room, if you need, if you, if you need an example for what an incredible teammate is, you don't have to look very far. Because as special as he is on the floor, and everybody knows what he can do as, and has done as a player, but the type of person he is, the, the way he treats his teammates, is so much more important to me than, than anything else. And that's what, that, that's what makes Doug special. I think for the first time we actually have a question over Zoom, Coach. Well, I feel good about that. Yeah, so <laughs> I'm not sure how this is going to work or come in from. So I, Tanner, do you have it on audio back there? Just, we're going to hear it over audio out here, but wait a second. If, if you're on Zoom, you can go ahead and ask the question. If you can hear us. But I don't know if they can hear us. Yeah. If, you're, if you can hear us. On Zoom. You'd think after two years we'd figure out how to use this Zoom thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, if we don't have any luck, we're going to have to pass. All right, we're just going to have to. Unfortunately, it's not going to work out. But uh, well, thank you. Any other questions for Coach Henderson before he goes? No? Okay. All right, thank you, Coach, for your time. Thank you, guys. Just a reminder.